did before. I mean, it did last night. Oh, wow. I was wondering because I haven't been in here with a new meeting. But it, the so when the TV oh, comes on, you hear it. Let me hear you. Oh, okay. It's hot. We're ready. We're ready. We're not live. Okay, we'll start it. We'll call a regular meeting in the New Alm City Council for June 5th, 2018, 4.30 p.m. to order. First item on the agenda is your consent agenda items. What's your wishes? I'll offer a motion to approve those. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items. Any discussion on any? I just uh, wanted to ask City Manager on the update on the PUC director where that position is at. I know there's some talk in your comments there. Or maybe well, we're currently we've got an offer uh, sent to, or offered to position to an individual, and we're currently in discussions. Waiting for some response. Yep. All right. Yep. Thank you. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Item number 2A, consider a motion to approve the issuance of a temporary on sale intoxicating liquor license for straight State Street Theater Company. <coughs> I'll offer the motion approving. Second. We got a motion in the second, and that's for June 24, 2018. Any discussion? See none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 2B, consider a motion approving the issue of on sale intoxicating permit for Black Enterprises LLC, New Alm Steel Junior A Hockey Club. I'll offer the motion. Second. We got a motion in the second, and that's for the year starting July 1st, 2018, ending May 30, or May 1st, 2019. No more discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 2C. <coughs> Consider a motion to approve the issuance of a temporary on sale liquor permit for Cypher Benji Bianchi, American Legion Post 132. Motion I'll to go ahead. I'll offer the motion. Second. We got a motion and a second, and that's for July 3rd, 2018, at Riverside Park. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Item 2D. Consider a motion approving the general licenses for the period of July 1st, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2019. I'll offer the motion approving the issuance of the following renewals and transfers of general licenses. And that's for like tobacco, fireworks, kennels, mechanical amusement, sheep, solid waste haulers, and tree service. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Do we still have that sheep license active? It's important. <laughs> I believe it has been last has year. It? I'm not positive, but no. I did Just talk curious. to him one day, and he said there was sheep. So okay. No more discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion <coughs> carries. Item number three A number one. Consider motion approving the application from Bill and Joan. Um, Brennan. Brennan requesting the variance to the permit to construct a covered porch, front, front porch addition six feet into the 30 foot front setback of the property zone R1, single family residence located at 1510 Lee Avenue. I'd like to just add that at the Planning Commission recommended approval at the May 31st, 2018 meeting. We had no written or oral comments in regards to this. Um, it is an issue of about being more handicap accessible for future planning to stay in their home. Uh, if you look at your packet, you'll see uh, the front door entry there on your packet there that it's, it's pretty tight that you can't open the door if you're going to have a walker or any capacities for entering. And it would be allowable within four foot six, so we're talking one foot six inches for a covered roof you know, the way our current ordinance reads. So so we recommended approval. I don't have an issue with this type of variance either. It's one item that eventually we're going to straighten out our zoning ordinance. When people used to come in where they can put a six foot deck on, you can only have a four foot six roof over the porch. Eventually I hope those two numbers coincide with each other you come in for a permit for the six foot porch you can have a six foot roof over it I don't know why in 1969 it was written like that but 
And I know we did give numerous variances for people to come out with a six-foot roof on a porch. We did one years back for a bathroom. I don't have an issue with it at all. I'll offer a motion approving the application. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number 3A, number 2, consider resolution of Approving with one condition application with Brent Donner, president of DLC Manufacturer Manufacturing and Fabrication Incorporated, and Jeff Dietrich, president of the New Home Economic Development Corporation, for a conditional use permit to allow the location of the metal fabrication business on the property zone I-1 at 24 Sampson Street. Again, the Planning Commission recommended approval at the May 31st, 2018 meeting with one condition that it be filed with the Brown County. And if you're looking at your packet, it came down to uh, the design and build for the future <coughs> of their building for the layout. The other lot was not going to be as work for them. So this is why this is back on again. They're going to be just changing one lot over. No concerns from anybody? No concerns. Okay. I'll offer the resolution, waive the reading, approving with the one condition. Second. We got a motion and a second off the resolution, waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, finance director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 3A, number <coughs> 3, consider a resolution <coughs> approving with conditions application from Jeff Bertrand on behalf of the New Orleans Public Schools requesting a conditional use permit to allow the installation of an irrigation well in the R1 zoning district at 1600 Oak Street. And the Planning Commission recommended approval with conditions at the May 31st, 2018. Uh, we had no written or oral uh, uh, responses in regards to this. Uh, they worked with the city staff in, in regards to the water department uh, and to what they needed to do to proceed forward and everything. And they presented uh, all the information needed and it's gonna be a cost savings for them in the future by having more irrigated fields for future expansion for soccer and things of that nature. Yeah, it seemed to make sense when I read through the read through this. There's a lot of conditions, but they seem to apply, so I certainly favor it. Yeah. And I did like the, the Planning Commission's reasons and recommendations on our action sheet. With that, I'll offer a resolution, waive the reading, approving with conditions, the application of Jeff Bertrand on behalf of New Orleans Public Schools, requesting a conditional use permit use to allow the installation of an irrigation well in an R1 zoning district at 1600 Oak Street. I'll second. We got a motion and a second off the resolution, waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item <coughs> 4A, receive communication from Brent Donner on the proposed relocation of and incentives of the DLC Manufacturing and Fabrication Incorporated on Lot 6, Block 3, Airport Industrial Edition. Brian? <coughs> Mr. President and City Council members, uh, Mr. Donner is here, <clears throat> and maybe he uh, can take the time to explain uh, what his proposed development is all about and, and where he wants to go and, uh, in the airport industrial park. <coughs> you do have his correspondence, which uh, kind of outlines uh, uh, the, the things that he'll be looking for from the city. So here's an opportunity to talk about your business. Name and address, just for the record. Name and address? Uh, Brent Donner, uh, 1510 South Minnesota Street from DLC Manufacturing. And I guess, what questions did you have for me? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you're planning. Hey, uh, explain a little bit about your business and, and, and why you're looking to uh, go into the airport industrial park. Well, obviously we need to grow. You know, I was here last time and explained a few things to you guys, but things have kind of changed even from the last time we were looking at maybe a 20,000 square foot facility and now we're looking at possibly a 36,000 square foot facility 
if not bigger. Uh, it's, it's just our business is changing so fast we don't know what to do. So we were looking at lot number five and then the LK building kind of came up and we've lost that building pretty much because Windings is going to buy that building. So that's why we we're back for lot six, which you guys approve because mm -hmm. it's a better layout for what we need to do. <clears throat> but again, we have we have so much work right now, we just don't know what to do. And we're turning work away because I've talked to Dave Snowbrook a little bit and in order to do some of these things, I have to have everything in place by December 31st of this year. Uh, we're talking tax abatement or TIF. We haven't decided which path would be best for DLC to go down <coughs> right now, but in order to possibly have a facility to move into by December 31st, we need to crack on it now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, hopefully everything that I need from you guys, I can get approved. And if you have any questions for me, shoot them at me. <laughs> Mr. Donner's uh, uh, correspondence says he, he'll be looking, his firm will be looking for the city's assistance with the acquisition of the land participation in our city revolving loan program, tax abatement or tax increment financing, and any other financial incentives that might be available to uh, his, his company. We uh, are working uh, with Mr. Donner and, and, and we'll be uh, providing information so he can determine which is best, tax abatement or tax mm -hmm. you know, increment financing. Yep. It just depends on, uh, you know, we have the programs. It's just how it plays out with every particular business, whether or not one is one is better than the other. Uh, so uh, I think we're just asking that the uh, correspondence be received and putting the city council on notice that we'll be coming back to them on the various items that you, you see listed. Well, I know we certainly, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I just know that we've worked pretty hard the last couple of years in increasing opportunities out the industrial park and exactly what you're talking about, the expansion of other businesses in our community or bringing new industrial businesses into our community. So we're going to support you and do what we can to make this move as fast as we can. working on a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, I just met with, uh, just to kind of give you guys some idea, I just talked with Matt Teske from Teske Manufacturing over in Springfield mm -hmm. on Friday. Um, his wife would like him over in this town within the next five years. I can see it coming sooner if mm -hmm. the city will work with other businesses. I just talked with uh, Steve Reed, uh, Reinhardt from New Elm Precision Tool. Mm -hmm. They contacted me on the LK building, but the LK building is gone. And New Elm Precision is gonna need to expand in this town as well. There, there's, there's so many potentials <coughs> now. Right. If the city is willing to work with other businesses, you're gonna see this thing grow. Right. So That's what we wanna do. That's, yeah. what, that's what we're here for. So. Mm -hmm. And I need your help, so. Well, I'm going to offer a motion to receive and file this um, report. So thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Second. 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 We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Thanks. <coughs> Item 5A, consider motion authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Bolton and Mink to prepare plans and specifications for Herman Heights Park Hillside Stabilization Project adjacent to Center Street. Mr. Schmitz. Thank you, President Schmitz and counselors. You have before you additional information, Tom Schmitz from the Park and Recreation Department, additional information that you requested back on April 9th in regards to this project. On April 9th, we presented the sloped option with grass that we can mow. That's also more inviting from uh, Center Street where people can walk in and out of the park as opposed to trying to climb over retaining walls from Center Street sidewalk. But the request that you had was to try and mimic the MLC retaining wall system. And um, our consulting engineer, Bolton and Mink, has provided that cost. So you have before you the two cost estimates. Slope, approximately $260,000. And the uh, retaining wall system with vegetation and plantings, of five hundred and eighty five thousand dollars and that would mimic <coughs> the design of the MLC side correct yes the 585 it's, it's, so it's be the same on both sides of the yes mm-hmm <coughs> well I know <coughs> um, I certainly was one that asked to have a uh, 
option to take a look at that retaining wall. <coughs> I coughed at the two hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and I and I think I threw up at the five hundred eighty-five thousand. I can't. I'm not going to vote on either one of these tonight. I just don't think. I think there's got to be another solution, and I don't know what that option is. I think I'd like to hear what maybe some. Um, if we have some other potential designs that we could take a look at for that hill, um, it is a very infamous hill that's the you know ha supports our Herman monument. Um, but man, I I just can't justify either one of those costs. At least not at this point. I I really have the same concerns that I mentioned last night about that slope and and kids sliding down that slope and right down Center Street Hill and just like they do on Fifth North. Um, but now it'll even be more exciting because it'll even be a steeper hill to slide down. And I just see that as um, a no go for me. Um, but the five hundred eighty-five thousand, man. Councilor um, Schultz at yeah. the concert last night at German Park. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of rolling going rolling down the hill. Was there? And that has a little bit of this going, and this I don't think the um, slope will have that. So I don't know that anybody would roll down the hill, or roll across the sidewalk, and into the street. But the temptation is there. Temptation's mm -hmm. there. I'm, it, it happens on Fifth North. It's doing. It happens now in winter time. They're sliding down and sliding onto the street and. Not a lot way, not a lot, but I see it happening. I drive up and down those streets all the time, and I, I just have some real concerns. Plus, I just think that look is not good for our city, um, and I and I don't know if there's another option. And I, I know we've had that retaining wall there for a long time, and if it has to sit there for another year till we can figure this out, I'm okay with that. Um, I'd like to hear hear from some of our um, landscapers and get maybe there's some ideas that we haven't thought about that could be in this middle range somewhere and make it somewhat blend with um, what we have across the street um, and come in at a much more reasonable price. This almost sounds like the 585 is the Cadillac version. Is there a way to trim it down a little bit? I don't know. I, I'm not ready to vote on it today, but that's just that's just me. You know, I'm going to agree with Councilor Schultz. Even the simple design, we're $80,000 over budget, what we budgeted this year. And I went through that spreadsheet that Bolton and Make designed. I mean, is it possible to do a retaining wall, wait for vegetation next year, or do we come up with a <coughs> in between plan? I thought about a phase in too of right. some sort, yeah. But. I guess I'm fine with tabling it for now, is my thoughts, and look for our other plans and or maybe phase, you know, one, two, and three phases if it's feasible. I mean, right now we're out of budget. You know, we mm -hmm. we, we budgeted two hundred thousand for this plan, and I I don't like the idea of of uh, the hill personally and trying to mow the whole hill and try to maintain it and worry about washouts and things of that nature. I, I think if we're going to do it, we got to do it right. So. Is that something that's possible to talk with more landscape folks and see if there's other designs that we're not thinking of? I think there's probably uh, an infinite amount of different designs available out there, yeah. and we certainly could pre present some more if you'd like to see a few more designs. Um, you know, I feel that uh, simply mowing with our with our large riding mowers would be the most cost effective from a maintenance standpoint, and it's more inviting. Um, you know, retaining walls kind of you know <coughs> mirror a, a castle or a uh, um, defended. Um, site and I just think like that a German theme I just think mm -hmm. that it's more inviting inclusive and open um, to uh, to have grass and uh, a better view shed I would say also mm -hmm. but even I'd like to see some more designs I don't know but even with the plan a we still had a retaining wall up at the top to retain mm -hmm. the restrooms just to save the restroom until that phase of a future park um, master plan gets implemented at some point, we'll need to have an improved uh, restroom facility <coughs> for that park. And that was part of another reason is right when, no matter which design I think that we would pick right now, when you drive up that hill, the very first thing you're going to see is a bathroom, according to these two designs. Those trees are gone. The only structure up there is going to be a bathroom, right? There will be mm -hmm. a, a retaining wall around the bathroom that can be faced um, to appear to be limestone, casota stone, so it, it certainly can be aesthetically pleasing, 
and there's potential for other plantings in the area. Um, I just wouldn't recommend conifers as they, uh, you know, as or large trees, which right, would impact right. the view of the monument. Yep, I agree. Um, I know the master plan originally talked about moving that bathroom on the other side of Herman in the middle there somewhere, right? Yes, and possibly incorporated into a visitor center. Right. It might... My thought is we do all this expensive work on this hill and then three years later we say, oh, now we're ready to, to make that move and now we're going to dig all that out again. And would it make sense to look at that bathroom move now? Are we too just too, far, too early? Well, that would be another expense, unbudgeted I expense. I know. Um, you know, I think the existing retaining walls are certainly a groundskeeping safety hazard and even a hazard to the visitors. Um, they're very unstable, and uh, and and large rainfalls. Uh, I agree. They're very can present yep. blowouts, and mm -hmm. a uh, sloped grass uh, mm -hmm. hill would be uh, much safer in my eyes. Yep. Either one of those options would be a lot safer. That's for sure. So. Tom, when they designed this, was there any discussion about you know the safety aspect of kids sliding down the hill, or I mean, did you discuss any of that when <coughs> you were trying to? work this plan or uh, yes it's certainly something we've spoken about um, you know it's there are other more destination type sledding hills in the community and uh, we don't see a significant amount of sledding right there um, right in other locations of Herman Harmon there are, there's an area that people use frequent South German Park is a, uh, a fantastic place that's frequented with sledding um, so, oh. so part of it is the sledding, but part of it's just, a, and maybe it's just a different viewpoint than you have, is aesthetically pleasing going up a hill that looks pretty similar. It looks pretty nice when you're going up to a national monument. I just don't know on what, how well that's going to look when one side's just grass and the other one has, you know, the, 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 the blocks. I just don't, mm -hmm. I don't know, a difference of opinion, I don't know. Councillor Schultz, I have an opinion on that, and that is that, uh, you know the south side of the hill is private property of a, of a private a college, college and this is a public park you know there's there's different uses there's different ownership there's there's um, you know I wouldn't want to compare those two properties mm -hmm. um, you know even though they're adjacent to a, the same street right uh, it, know, it could be pleasing. confusing to the visitor that they see it oh it looks the same what is, is, is Herman now owned by the college or um, is there some land ownership going on? Yeah. I guess I disagree. I, I, I'd like to personally agree with Les. I'd like to see both sides as close as possible. I think it'd be unique. It has nothing to do with who would own what or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to talk to the college and see who they had designed theirs. And just grab the blueprint. The city, yeah. the city designed that. Did ya? No. They did a good plan? job. You <laughs> <laughs> got plans. Well, you already got the plans in, uh, right? <coughs> we do have the plans for the college wall. Yes. Why don't we just <laughs> flip it to the other side? Yeah, just flip them over. <laughs> well, because there's a little different vertical uh, <laughs> ice. There's different soil conditions. There's a lot of different things. That there's that consider. toilet. <laughs> You know, and as long as the city engineer was commenting on it, the, Steve, when I looked through this cut sheet on the very expensive wall, it's very possible to downgrade some of these costs. I know it is. Also do it in, in sections if you wanted to do one, two, or three. Like, you don't have to do $100,000 worth of planting the first year. I mean, th that doesn't absolutely have to be done. <coughs> I just thought some of those numbers are extremely high. I mean, $50,000 for... The engineer costs and staking and whatnot, that's a lot of money. Well, I think the consultant did an, in, an inclusive estimate. Certainly, we could do some staking and things of that nature. You might be able to shorten that wall up. You probably don't have to run all the way down down the hill where the existing condition is. That's only, you know, three feet high. You could slope some of that. Maybe toward the middle, you'd want to have, you know, a better wall. So I think there's probably some different options. I know Tom's trying to, you know, pushing for just sloping right now but I think there's probably some things to look at it's it's going to be more costly than 260,000 I can pretty much guarantee mm -hmm. that but it's the council's decision 
But it's a one-time cost. Mm -hmm. It's going to be there for a very long time. If we use those stone pavers, they're, they last a very long time. Um, I, I think it's worth taking a little bit more time to make the right decision. So I'm going to offer a motion to table this for to look at some additional options and whether that still is yet this fall. It would be nice to make a decision this fall, but maybe, if maybe the work not starting till spring. But um, I'd like to see some more options. So I'll offer that motion to table it with future options to come back. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? I guess the comment I'm going to make is we're definitely going to table it, I would assume, but and it, we know it's not going to be one month, two months. It could drag out a lot longer than that. So I think we need to do something with the existing wall. We can't leave the stone laid there in the middle where you mow and everything else. I think everything needs to be cleaned up and fixed up so it looks presentable, at least. I think they keep it summer. fixed up, right? You keep it... There are a couple of areas that have fallen that apart that bad. we uh, have not um, replaced pending a decision here. Right. But, but I, uh, yeah. we certainly can pick those up if, <coughs> if you'd like us to. I think we need to get it to look respectable anyway because I don't foresee it getting done for a while yet. Well, and it, you know, budget time is right around the corner, so this might become a budget item if it, we vote on one of the higher options. The other thing, too, would it be... Well, I guess it's better tabling it, but if you went out for bids and then just rejected a bid, if they really came in that outrageous. Well, at some point, uh, we'll prepare plans and specifications, and you will uh, you know, be asked to approve those right. prior to bidding. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to know what – it could be an alternate one or two. Maybe there's two or three options that we bid out. Right. Yeah, I, I like that idea. We could bid. I'm coming where less is when I – Seen the five hundred eighty-five thousand, I just about fell over. <laughs> it oh, is it? I knew it was going to be case. high, but I, I, oh man! So. Let's see what you can do. I think you can work some magic, Tom. We'll bring back uh, some options uh, within a month or two, hopefully. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Polls no. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Item six A. Consider resolution. Approving <coughs> further implementation of the local performance measurement system <coughs> developed by the Council for Local Results and Innovations. I'll move it. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. It's motion. A oh, oh, it's a resolution. Uh, back up to it. <coughs> Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 6B, consider a motion to schedule a joint City Council PU, uh, Public Utilities Commission informational meeting for June 19, 2018 at 3.30 p.m. to discuss the audited financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2017. <coughs> I'll offer the motion. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 6C, consider a motion authorizing the city manager to prepare a request for proposals to distribute, accept, and review the proposals to provide a banking services for the City of New Ulm, New Ulm Public Utilities, Economic Development Authority, and affiliated organizations for the five-year period commencing January 1st, 2019. I'll offer the motion. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? It's just normal routine every five years, I guess. So all in favor say aye. 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 Polls no. Motion carries. Item 6D, consider motion to confirm the appointment of Gwenis. Janice? Gwenis. Gwenis Christensen to the Police Commission. I'll offer the motion. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 6E, consider a resolution authorizing the <laughs> purchase of the property adjacent to the Cottonwood Street to be used at public right of way. Steve, you have some on that? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yeah, we've, we've got a, the city council has ordered in an improvement for Cottonwood Street from 
Butternut to Pass Ridge View Drive, about 250 feet. Over the years, we've been at, it was originally platted as a 60 foot wide right away, and we've been acquiring an additional 10 feet on either side of the roadway as subdivisions have platted. Uh, because of this uh, contract to do this improvement, we've got two more small parcels that we're recommending be acquired as part of the project. Um, we've negotiated, or I've negotiated, uh, a price with the two property owners, one at 3000 and one at 4500 for a total of 7500 which I, uh, which would round out the full 80-foot right-of-way for the length of the project. So there is a need. We have uh, <coughs> a small investment here, but I think it's appropriate to move ahead with that, with that purchase. I've d discussed it with the city attorney, and he's willing to work with us to, to accomplish this task. Hearing that, I'll offer the resolution. Waive the reading. Second. second. We got a motion. Second to offer the resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? <coughs> Seeing none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councilor Mack. Yes. Councilor Schultz. Yes. Councilor Christian. Yes. President Schmitz. Yes. Motion carries. Item 6F. Consider resolution to accept donations offered to the city for the Park and Rec Department for identified purposes. Uh, before I offer the resolution, again, the Park and Rec had one heck of a month with the donations. Uh, I'll offer the resolution, waive the reading, accepting the following donations. $250 cash from Hyman Construction for Days of Play events. $250 cash from Larry Roofing. Uh, Rec on the Go was a $10,000 cash from Newell Medical Center and Line of Health for a Neighborhood Healthy Activity Grant. Uh, German Park Paver Stone Improvements, $100 cash from Kim Schwab honoring Mike Reinhardt's. For Washington Park, a $2,000 in value of an art stone bench and concrete pad from Friends of Darlene Ubel honoring her with uh, proposed verbiage and loving memory of our daycare mom, Darlene Ubel. We didn't, really, we didn't realize we were making memories. We just knew we were having fun. Forever in our hearts, your daycare kids. And then a uh, brush and buck, buckthorn removal equipment, two tools from Carol Fleege. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to accept the donations. Question for you, Tom. Since you're so good at getting all this, can you get $585,000 for this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, work on that. <laughs> anyway, no more discussion. All in favor say aye. Resolution. Resolution. Oh, resolution. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> Item 6G. Consider resolution approving the request from the Community Housing Development Corporation to utilize a portion of the on-street parking area on the east side of Washington Street from Center Street to First North Street that equals three stalls and the south side of the street from First North Street to Washington Street to State Street six stalls as designated residential or uh, resident parking for the State Street apartments. <coughs> Name and address for the record please. Yes, my name is Heidi Rathman with um, Community Housing Development Corporation in Minneapolis. Um, good afternoon, Mayor and members of the City Council. I'm the Senior Vice President of Community Housing Development Corporation. We're the current owner and developer of State Street Apartments or the New Elm Middle School at 15 North State Street. Um, as you know, um, we've been working over the last few months on putting together the proposal for a potential um, fall start of the rehab of the middle school. And the parking is one of the challenges that we have um, that we've been working through, particularly in the last few weeks, to try to maximize the parking on site. Um, in your board packet, we have a updated site <coughs> plan that kind of lays out um, how uh, on street, or excuse me, um, on site parking, um, both for the housing and for the theater space. And what we're requesting um, today is a special request actually to consider nine additional dedicated off street parking stalls to meet the 1.5 minimum parking requirements for the housing portion. Um, as you can see on the site plan, what, what we <coughs> have currently proposed is there's kind of a, grade, a gray section, um, which is the 29 stalls that are dedicated to the theater. And then to the north of that is the white um, area where we're able to put in 47 stalls in the back of the school building. In addition, we're proposing an, another surface lot in the northeast corner of the site 
that holds another 27 stalls. And by doing that, we're maximizing the parking on site. Um, however, we're still nine stalls short from your zoning code. And so rather than um, coming in with the variance here in the coming months, what we're asking to do is dedicate um, nine on street stalls and where we're proposing to put them but of course flexible is um, on the most easterly end of first north um, close which would be pretty close to the door of the residential it also stays away from the church's parking needs and then also um, on the most northerly portion of north washington street uh, where the door is for the, the little theater, if you're familiar with that building. Um, and then leaving everything to the south of that available for um, uh, theater parking when there's a, events. Um, are there any questions? I have a few. Um, so would you not have any parking then on, um, on State Street? No dedicated parking? We have no dedicated parking on State Street. Okay. And that's actually some direction that's coming from the state um, Historic Preservation Office. That's important for the front facade of the building to not have any dedicated on-street parking. Okay. So I was kind of wondering why there wouldn't. Cause that'd be a close to an entrance yep. too. Yep. So I wasn't sure why there wasn't one there. Okay. Um, okay. And then do we put if we approve this, does signs go up then saying these spots are dedicated, or how does that how does that work? I guess I would assume because otherwise there'd be no reason. Right for anybody to anybody, anybody to park, park there. there, right? But then it'd be. Is it going to be a 24-hour parking? I guess that'd be a question I'd have for Roger, or how that would well, go. Well, those things on the are street. to be determined. Um, I don't know what the proposal would be from the developer. Would you be assigning these to particular tenants, or we'd assign these to particular tenants? In most cases, we would look at the number of car you know upon emission into the building. Um, we'd do an assessment of the the car needs and if oftentimes cars people will say well I only need one stall then that stall would of course go in the on-site spot but if they are maybe in a three-bedroom and there's an opportunity for a second car we would assign these it would almost be like overfill parking but we would give those particular residents then um, like some kind of permit or whatever um, <coughs> the city is comfortable with doing we've done it a number of ways but they would certainly be marked um, uh, so each outside. one gets a parking stall. Yep. That's designated. Exactly. Okay. Um, Have you talked to any of the neighbors that are across the street on Washington Street in regards to this? You know, yep. and how, yeah, how so they feel about uh, having yep. no parking across the street? Yeah, so we had a community meeting. I don't recall the date. It was about two weeks ago. Um, on that site plan, we had the entire North Washington as dedicated um, mm -hmm. off street parking. And so um, we had a number of questions about it. We didn't necessarily have opposition, but people, that was one of the main questions, that was where is everyone gonna park? Um, and I think this proposal kind of reduces the impact to, those, to the streets by adding, we were able to squeeze in more units on site. So now what we're proposing is just three along North Washington, and I think that's gonna be a little bit easier for all the residents. Um, nobody specifically said, <laughs> I don't want those stalls across the street from my house, but of course when there's dedicated street parking across the street from them, that entire length, um, there's concern. Who's um, responsible for snow removal for the, that area since they're des designated? Because inside <coughs> here in your, all this parking, you would be responsible for snow removal. Yep, Who would take care of those nine? Yep, so we, I mean, typically when we've done a, had a situation like this in the past, we've of course been responsible for everything that was on site and then the on street parking was maintained by the city. Um, so I guess if the situation would be different here, we'd have to discuss that, but that would be what we're, what we'd typically see. Mr. President, I don't, I don't know, currently there are this examples cited of where we have these arrangements in place. I'm assuming we're plowing those streets, and yep. I don't know how often they've had to be striped, if we're also paying for that. Uh, Dave Schnobert, Community Development Director. In your um, report on this uh, particular item, uh, there were two examples cited where the city has, in essence, closed existing street right away, 
and then designated the uh, parking for uh, specific users. <coughs> um, one of them is uh, the uh, First South Street between uh, the Brown County Courthouse and Turner Hall. Um, that parking was dedicated to um, uh, for county employees and county uses. Um, obviously, it gets wider use and uh, the street really isn't closed, but uh, the city did officially take that action. And then there is a written agreement um, associated with uh, that action uh, that stipulates uh, respective responsibilities of the city and county. There is also a right-of-way um, <coughs> in front of the former Madsen's grocery store. Uh, it's North State Street. And that particular section of street was never constructed. Uh, and there was an agreement between uh, Madsen's and the city that allowed the use of that right-of-way for uh, parking purposes. Now, in that particular case, it's pretty clear that uh, the owner of the property uh, was responsible for, you know, all of the maintenance and uh, upkeep um, of the parking area. With regards to First South Street, uh, I assume that the city probably does that as, you know, as part of its uh, normal uh, responsibilities, but I would have to check the agreement. And again, these are, this is subject matter that would be addressed in the agreement that, uh, between the two parties, the city and uh, community housing. Okay. And Mr. President, yes. one, one other issue that you know, we've discussed with staff is my understanding is that the developer has a certain number of parking stalls that you are obligated to provide based upon the number of occupancy. Uh, but to the extent, and I don't know what the intention or if you've even formulated those yet for any visitor parking, because with the number of units, um, you know, we need to see how that would be accommodated. Yeah, the, the parking requirement that's established in the city code is 1.5 spaces per unit. And that parking requirement would take into consideration resident parking as well as visitor parking. It's meant to be an encompassing <coughs> um, standard for the, for the project, so it covers everything. There isn't a specific requirement for visitor parking. I understand, but we don't require that, but the developer might. You might assign parking spots, and I guess well, just one of the things we need to work through is if you have them, most of them assigned, and people get a lot of guests for an event, <coughs> and then they're going to be parking on the street, you know, the current residents might have some concerns about that. It's not going to be frequent or anything like that, but I guess we just need to maybe know a little bit more about what your plans would be. Yeah, I mean, with this parking count, we wouldn't expect that we have 83 people that need stalls. Um, that's just from the experience in our general portfolio, even in greater Minnesota. Um, so we would also designate, we haven't showed this, that yet on the site plan, but we would designate um, particular stalls for, for right. um, yeah. visitors. Okay. Can you <coughs> just briefly talk about how many apartments are going in in one, two, and three bedroom? Yeah, there's a total of 55. and believe it's didn't mean to put you on the spot yeah that's okay I brought it just in <laughs> case it might get asked <laughs> um, let's see here I just need my cheaters um, 12 one bedrooms 10 three bedrooms and then the balance is two bedrooms so what is that 11 12 13 44 two bedrooms or something like that oh no should have added it up here 30 Two. Yes, 32. 32 twos, 12 ones, and 10 three bedrooms. All right, thank you. <coughs> I guess I've got another question in regards when we had a previous developer that was looking to develop a property, <coughs> they were going to be able to get all their parking on site. So, what really changed? I mean, did you look at their previous plans, Senate Sarasota? Yeah. When they, yep. So the biggest does. difference is that they had a proposed surface lot at the corner of North State Street and Center Street. Mm -hmm. Um, there's where it's shaded on the site plan that you see in your packet. Um, the theater just owns the shaded gray part. And so on the white section, there was a spot there designated for um, additional surface lot. Um, 
after looking at that just from our perspective and just the access coming in off Center Street and the traffic flow, in addition to um, us needing to go through the state historic preservation process, um, that was something that they did not at all support is to have a surface parking lot. They really value that front facade, the, the original building along with the theater front. And so that was something that they gave us feedback on very early that that was not something that was going to be feasible um, if we <coughs> wanted to be eligible for the state credits, state historic credits. Have you talked to our fire department if they're okay with how the parking situation is about? Uh, if um, I r have reviewed this request with both the police chief and the fire chief, and they are both here, and they were both in agreement that it would be an acceptable arrangement, um, you know, for parking purposes. I see no <coughs> no concerns here. I'm going to offer a motion or offer a resolution, waive the reading, approving this request. Um, from the Community Housing Development Corporation utilize a portion of the on-street parking on the east side of Washington Street from center to 1st North Street, three stalls, and on the south side, 1st North Street, from Washington Street to State Street, six stalls as designated residential parking for State Street Apartments. I'll second that. Um, we have a motion and a second to offer resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? Yeah, I just, um, when you talk about having visitor stalls and assigned stalls, um, those stalls on the street how many visitor stalls do you think you would have with that and would those be the ones that would be assigned on street parking would um, you assign those last or um, yeah we haven't worked through all the details I think um, we would probably have some in both I think it's important to have some visitor stalls in the back there's better handicap accessibility through the parking lot in the back um, but as I mentioned how the on street is more of an overflow approach we may have a few out there as well um, I think for a building this size <coughs> we would have somewhere between four and six visitor stalls dedicated have you given any thought like when there's a major snowstorm or how you're in a clear and then where everybody's gonna park you know in place you know during you know because there's no covered parking yep we've um, in similar situations particularly where it's a pretty dense environment where there's nowhere to put people's cars um, unlike even in this case where they could go on the street temporarily we've phased the snow plow removal um, so it's almost like a city snow emergency where there's a notice that goes out to the residents that say please you know park in the most east southerly portion of the stall we'll get that cleared off and they have to move their cars and that's just unfortunately the the nature of it but we can stay pretty organized typically in the communication of how we get that um, cleared off very quickly I probably need to amend my motion a little bit because it does talk about making sure we have an agreement with the city attorney um, so I would amend my motion to make sure we include that agreement with the city attorney on this topic so I don't know who seconded my motion I did you okay with that I'm okay with that so I'll second that would it, would it be cleaner to have an agreement with the city that the city attorney prepares because I don't know that Roger wants to have an agreement with parking <laughs> with the housing Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think no, I got fine. the point that's fine I got the point <laughs> all right all right understood any more discussion getting started when November hopefully November and we'll be back at the end of July I believe it is um, for our final approvals for everything this was really to get a handle on what we needed to come in at for variances sure. and so now we know and we'll prepare those applications and then you'll be seeing us again so Great. good luck thank you very much Sounds good thank you very much any more discussion seeing none finance director please call the roll Councilor Fisher yes Councilor Mack Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? <coughs> yes. President Schmitz? Yes, motion carries. Item 7A, consider acceptance of a list of claims paid and approve a list of claims to be <coughs> paid. Claims paid in amount of $903,341.02 and approve a list of claims to be paid in amount of $580,911.70. So move. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion on any? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. With no more business. Meeting adjourned. Boom.
Ten minutes, you can smoke all you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wall it is. And so. You have to stay in there all the time and smoke. Different that. Oh, yeah. Get up there. <laughs>